Hello, this is Team Phoenix, <clears throat> back with my Death March No Armor playthrough of The Witcher 3. So, uh, there was a slight problem with the video at the end of the uh, last session, so I'm hoping that re-downloading it will sort it out. Um, but if not, then there's going to be a bit of difficulty with the end of the Kaemorin section at the end of the last part. So, basically what we've got... <laughs> Is I came to Bald Mountain and uh, I think I went to see the Emperor as well uh, which is interesting because it gives you the opportunity to get either the Witcheress or the Empress ending for Ciri um, or obviously the bad ending depending what skill of the choices you make so uh, now we've just got to go and bring this woman the coin which we're gonna do just now and I'll obviously just uh, need to take a quick break and check the audios coming through as well um, but I'll do that momentarily so we've got this and uh, then you know after we are going to see what exactly has happened so where is my crossbow and why do I not have it need to check that crossbow hello okay so now we've got the crossbow back Let's hit these drowners I think they're probably a little lower level if you don't have the um, enemy upscaling on but never mind should have used killer whale before I came down here as well but I'll probably be okay take these things out and then we have to go and find the coin which turns out to be the defiers Oren, as it is um, but yeah <clears throat> so we've got that is that a chest to get or is that just something else oh that is a chest let's grab that Gonna be running out of breath here. Uh, oh dear. Oh well. Got the superior cat there. Okay, so what I'll need is I'll need my superior swallow because <clears throat> I'm gonna lose a ton of damage here. Just while I uh, get up. So yeah, I should have used the killer whale before I dove really, but never mind. So just offset a little bit of that with the superior swallow just so I can make it back to the surface and there's a fiend to take on I believe yeah there it is so hopefully yeah we did get the um, capture the uh, ending of it if I'm able to re-download but we'll see right so right now let's get my decoctions going again I'll be meditating in a minute anyway so it doesn't make a big difference with these I'll get the superior f superior Petri on as well, just so I can burn this thing a little easier. <clears throat> and with it being a one-on-one -on -one fight, I'll also be able to use Axie on it. It's going to hypnotize me now, which is a bit unfortunate. But I'll be able to um, get the dodge in there. Just keep my distance. And uh, whilst I can't cast Axie properly uh, where it's like this, and uh, whilst you're hypnotized, I can just keep my distance and then use it a couple of times to get my stamina regeneration up and get some hits in. And because of the Ancient Lashing Decoction, I'll be able to um, increase my stamina regen. Oof, get a few hits in and not get pasted like that as long as I'm careful. <laughs> I'll keep my distance a little bit. And you can see after a couple of uses of Axie, it just gets really high. So I've inflicted bleeding there, can keep Quinn up. And then uh, we can go to the usual sort of hard sweep tactics. Now this is my f one of my favourite tactics against big one-on-one -on -one enemies. Is you can get your stamina regeneration up. And then just use hard sweep and heavy attacks repeatedly. Which is really useful. So kill that thing. Now we've got to uh, go and take on the Sylvan. Uh, what are, You know I never remember with Sylvans if they're Ogroids or Relics. I think they're Relics. But um, yeah. Okay. So they're relics. So I can leave my superior relic oil on there as well. And that should be fine. Okay. So. Let's see how we go. Okay. Where are we at? We are going this way now. <clears throat> we have the Orin. So that's fine. And then we can go and face the crones. Now, this will mean that I have to fight the crones. And the Sylvan, the Sylvan's easy. The crones are a nightmare. We'll come on to that in a moment. 
But yeah, we'll have to have a see. So we follow this person. Managed to uh, burn myself. Excellent. Just going to finish my coffee. Do apologize if you hear me slurping, you know, in the background. And then we've uh, got this part of the game to do. So the crones, extremely annoying, very annoying fight. Really hate that. But we'll have to do what we can. Right, so there's that open. Turns out that very rudely this is in fact the Defiers Orin. Which sets us up to uh, take a beat down from this guy. But we're not going to be too bothered about that. So we'll just beat him first. Alright, got all this stuff. That's the trial and all that. But, lo and behold, he's not very happy about it. So, we're going to have to try and beat this guy. He actually, uh, you know, doing a fair amount of damage takes a fair amount of damage there. So, have to be a little bit careful with that. Fortunately, Siri gives us a little bit of help. Could do with um, uh, taking a little bit less damage there. So, I'll have to dodge away a little bit. Keep Quen up. But I do have Superior Tony and uh, I've got the Ancient Lush and Decoction as well, as always. So let's keep Quen up against this guy because he can do pretty decent damage. I'm still a little bit surprised at how little damage uh, the enemies actually deal considering it is on Death March and have no armor this late in the game. But never mind. So taking a bit of fire damage there. Get my uh, hard sweep going. Keep Quen up. Just in case. And see, the reason that uh, I'm not using the War Tag Decoction for the 50% attack boost is for things like that. Like, you very rarely stay at, at high health when you're playing this sort of style. So, you know, not really not really worth me having that. So, Fate has decided. Anyway, so I'm going to take out Imlareth. So Imlarith, blah, 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 and that means that you have to fight the crones with Siri. But a little bit ironically, the crones are actually a much more difficult fight with Siri than Imlarith is with Geralt. Because you have all your stuff for Imlarith, and we'll do that shortly. Very nice dive there. Whoops. But with Siri, fighting the crones is a real pain. I very seriously dislike this fight. Um, it requires a ton of patience and a lot of dodging. You just take out the big crone first and then gradually wear the other two down. So, you know, it's quite annoying. But what can you do, really? So we'll see. See how it goes. Yeah, so the, unfortunately there is something wrong with my Twitch screen stream from the end of the last episode. It's not letting me record it properly, which is going to be irritating. So, that bit will be missing, so I do apologize for that. Right, so we've got to fight the crones. This is them, how they look normally. And they don't do enormous damage, but there are three of them, and it's just really annoying. So you just gotta try and keep your distance, get a few hits in, and use that dodge, uh, that Y attack. On Bruis, I tend to find be the best way to do it. So get a few hits on her, and then just keep dodging from the other ones. And she's the easiest one to take down. If you take a load of damage, then you just have to dodge a, a bunch. So you'll just be hammering B button for most of this fight. It's very annoying. But I have a theory that like series damage that she does is based on some of the skills that Geralt has. Like she does more damage if he has higher damage. Um, abilities so I'm not really sure but it certainly seems like there is something that it does seem like there's something that governs how much damage Siri does or not so we've been having a lot of uh, red skills and uh, red mutagens it seems like I'm doing a lot of damage there to Bruce so 
Um, she's actually going down pretty quickly and I'll be able to do that. And so yeah, she's gone down pretty quickly there, which is useful. And the other two are by far the more annoying of the of the two of the three crones, so I've got to take out uh, Weavis if possible. Whichever one you find easier. But I mean they're about the same, so I'll just wail on Weavis at the minute. And we're just gonna take her out first out. I don't know where the other crone is, so Whispers, so uh, if you can knock him down with the white like that, you can get a few good hits in, which is useful. So I'm going to focus on Weavis because she's got the least, less health at the minute. And if I can take her down, that'll be easier. Do you have to take all three down? I think you just have to, you have to take two of them down and then reduce the health of the last one. I can't remember. So I'm just going to wail on Whispers a bit. And like I say, if you can get her knocked down... She gets up pretty quickly, but it's still a little better than uh, the others. So you can get that charge attack, get in a few hits, and then dodge behind her. And this is actually, you know, about as well as this fight can go, in my opinion. So I've just got to try and use serious charge attack, if possible. Get those hits in, and if you can knock her down, get her a few hits before she stands up. And that's that, so... That was actually relatively painless. That's about as well as that fight can go, really, in my opinion. So, yeah, interesting. So that's the crones dealt with. Now we have Imlarith with Geralt. Now, I don't remember Axie doing very much um, against... Let's just meditate first. Get all my stuff back. That sort of auto meditate thing. Get all of those. Now, there's a place of power up here. Uh, you can get this place of power by like jumping up the side and glitching really early in the game, but I just find it a ton easier to go to uh, Skelliger and Toussaint easy, which I do as a matter of course anyway. So I never feel the need to come and get this one. But it is very important to prepare for Imlarith properly. Um, he can be quite a tricky fight, so where have I gone? I've somehow fallen all the way down here. Huh, never done that before. Oh well, anyway, so yeah, it's important to prepare for Imlarith properly. Um, and make sure that we've got everything active that we need to. So, uh, let's make sure we do that now. So, I want to have everything sorted. Now, um, I can't meditate exactly. Um, but, uh, it won't let me actually meditate, but I am after 6pm already, so that's great. So, I can get the superior Torneal uh, active. And then I can get everything else ready. So I want my potions, uh, so I want my kidney decoction and ancient lesson decoction in place. And then I want the superior elemental oil to do more damage to him. I don't remember bombs being particularly effective. Um, so, you know, not much point doing that. Now I'm just going to wait for this toxicity to die off. Uh, and then once that has worn off, I'll have the little bit of extra... Um, health and the Tony Al will last indefinitely. You see there it was at 109 and there it's still at 109 so even though the full moon um, does last a good amount of time we'll have that extra health for the first couple of minutes of that fight so that's quite useful and we'll let that toxicity die off so that we can use other potions uh, in the battle as well. Now if you have the patience or if you have the fast metabolism uh, decoction then you could just, you know, let that uh, die off entirely. I'm just going to make sure that that has actually saved there. So that I can go and do this Imlareth fight. I'm at level 27, so after this I'll get a little bit of extra as well. I'm just going to wait for it to save. You can hear Imlareth and his ladies uh, in the background. So, the things for this fight that are important is we've got our silver sword, and you can see there that I've got the superior elemental oil as well. And uh, we've got the ancient lesson decoction, which I'll be using in combination with Axie and Ard Sweep to raise my stamina regeneration as I have been, um, you know, throughout this uh, playthrough, which is very useful. Now, for the bombs, I'm also going to make sure that I've got the uh, superior northern wind ready because that's a very useful uh, bomb. Uh, probably the best, if not one of the best, bombs. Now, there's no point in me using Superior Blizzard or anything like that because it's a fight against a single enemy, so not really worth doing there. 
Right, so now that we've got that saved and a bit of that toxicity's worn off, we can go and take on Imlareth and see how this goes. So is Imlareth and all his uh, succubus? I have no, I have no matter telling him uh, where the girl is, meaning Siri. So yeah, actually doesn't really stun him, but. Um, I'm more bothered about getting my um, stamina regeneration up for the fight first. So a couple of uses of Axie. Uh, whilst he's in this first form, he doesn't teleport too often, although he does teleport a little bit. Um, but that's not really an issue. I'm just using Axie to get my stamina regeneration up. And now that I've done that a few times, I can switch to my normal stuff of using Quen. And uh, then we can go to our sweep. So uh, we've got all that in place. And uh, now we can just uh, dodge behind him, Lareth, and try and get some hits in. We don't have Rend. Now, Rend makes this uh, a lot easier. So uh, we'll need to find some other ways of getting hits in. Now, one of the uh, things you can do is you can try Igni, but it's uh, extremely difficult to burn him. I don't think he actually can be burnt, so that's not a problem. Let's see if we can get a broadhead arrow on. Nope, can't get a broadhead arrow either. So we'll just wait for him to uh, dodge around a bit. You can see there that if we uh, take in any hits like that it's going to be a problem so just got to wait for him to dodge about if you have rend this fight is a ton easier and uh, also will like it's a bit easier to hit him with will but uh, this shouldn't be a problem we'll just get some hits in from behind and uh oof, just be a bit more careful than i have been doing there in making sure that um i'm avoiding hits so let's see if we can get uh hard working doesn't really seem to make much of a difference against him, which is a bit of a problem, but never mind. Uh, so we're just going to have a lot of patient dodging, keep Quen up, and then get some hits in. Now, again, that uh, heavy hit was doing about 388 there. Uh, so let's see how much the fast attacks do. The fast attacks should do quite a bit less against uh, Imlarith because he is one of the most heavily armoured um, enemies. But as the fight goes on, Let's have a look. So yeah, that was 250 on a crit. So you want to try and be sticking to um, the heavy attacks wherever possible. And uh, now that we have such high uh, stamina regeneration, I can actually use Erden as well and uh, slow him down a bit, which is very useful. And get more hits in. So that stamina regeneration is incredibly important and that's the, you know, one of the main reasons why. Um, because it lets you use other stuff like uh, Erden and still be able to keep your coin up. Uh, because obviously the uh, Axie and the Ard weren't really stopping him in his tracks there. But now I've got the tactics down a little bit. I can uh, keep Erden up and then get Quint. And the, uh, we're almost at the second phase of the fight already. And the second phase, you have to be a little more careful with your dodging. Um, but um, you also can be... Um, you also can be a, a little easier to get some hits in because he'll smash his mace into the ground. Uh, I think he drops his shield as well, so we'll have a look. See, normally, you'd just be fighting Imlarith, and if you're doing my death march walkthrough, you can quite easily have um, be level 30 if you if you need to um, by this point, and uh, have the mutations from Blood and Wine, which makes this a uh, much easier fight. But it's quite fun to be able to do it properly and use a bit of the tactics. So we've got Exploding Quen there as well, which is, uh, you know, the um, Quen skill. Get a few hits in there. And now this is where he's going to start teleporting. So we have to be careful with that. But again, we have such a uh, high stamina regeneration that at least we can get a good few hits in there. And keep Quen up. Nice bit of dodging. And when he smashes his mace in the ground, get a few hits in. And the stamina regen is so high now that I can just keep going up at all times, virtually. And, and use Superior Swallow as well. So I just want to get a few uh, harder hits in, so I've used Superior Thunderbolt too. And then when he smashes his mace every time, we're getting a big heavy hit in because of that Thunderbolt, so... Can get some light hits in too, whilst he is swinging about. But it's not really worth it. Really should just be a bit more patient and keep your distance, but I'm not very patient. So, I mean, that's how you would do it if you were being properly patient. You would just keep Quinn up, and then every time he, do he uh, dodges and things like that, just get those hits in.
and then oof, keep going up <laughs> and just dodge about because obviously he is extremely dangerous so you can actually use the uh, lock on as well so that every time he teleports you still know where he is which is useful and whilst I've got Quen up, I can comfortably get a few hits in sometimes. And that was him. Bam. So, that's him worth taking care of. Who needs armor? Mm. Now, normally I'll skip the cutscenes, but this one's just so good that I'm just going to leave it rocking. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you know it. Mm, get wrecked. So, yeah. Let's have a look. And there's Imlarith sorted. So, we take him out. And this is a really important thing. I harp on about this all the time if you've ever watched my videos or anything else. So we'll just deal with the uh, Imlarith first. And you've got this. Rut roll. Oh, smack. So, after you've done that, you got to meet up with... Let me have a look. Get a ton of more experience there. Just again, got two of the cons. One of them got away with Vesemir's medallion, which is irritating. But you can skip through all this stuff. Um, and then when Siri says, see if you want to wait, this is very important that you do. Um, so make sure you do this. Let's have a look. Not quite yet. That's what we want. So, ah, oh, nice hoggles. Nice hoggles. Right, but the reason you want to do this is you always want to go um, and get the acorn from Imlareth's corpse. And this is supremely important, and I will show you why in just a minute. So here is his corpse. You get a magic cake on. Now, some people, there have been rumors for years that if you plant the acorn, uh, give it to them, they plant it, and you come back and get more acorns, but I've never seen any evidence of that. Never been able to get it work myself. I don't think that's accurate at all. So what you want to do is consume the acorn from your menu, and then you get two ability points. So make sure you do that both in your regular playthrough and in your New Game Plus playthrough. You've got a ton of ability points at the minute. I could do a load of other stuff um, with it. I could use all of these, but I'm just sticking with this basic build at the minute because much as I uh, love the Ard Sweep Ancient Lesson uh, decoction, uh, which, you know, is my pretty much the only really OP thing I'm using in this. Any combination of the other stuff um, would make things, you know, a little too overpowered. I'm not interested in this being easy. I'm interested in it being a bit of a challenge. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're going off. <laughs> Alright, so that... Right, live without them. That's no problem. Anyway, so that's Imlareth and Crohn's. Nice start to this episode. Um, there we go. So, just going to skip over this. Then we've got all of the Novigrad parts. And uh, I think all of the Novigrad bits are actually compulsory, so it doesn't really matter what order I do them in. Just going to have to do that anyway, and then go from there. So we'll see. One way or another, we shall see. Just waiting for this to load. It's taking a darn long time. It does with the console version, unfortunately. A little bit. So now we have bits to do with, we have parts to do with Siri and with Yen. And, um, hmm. uh, yeah, so we've got bits to do with Trist, Yen, Siri, and Avalach. So we'll have to do those as soon as possible and get through what we can this episode. And then if needs be, we can pick up the rest of it next episode, and that'll be pretty much the game done. Unless I decide to uh, go on and do the DLCs, which I haven't decided yet, so. 
Okay, so in the writ all sorted. Sorted that. Right, let's crack on with this. Alright, alright. So we've got all this stuff. Anything that I need to dump in the stash just to save a bit of, you know, weight or anything like that. Let's have a look. I'm also level 27, so I'll have to have a look at when the uh, the next set of swords is available. I think I'm using the woven swords, if I remember correctly. So they're available at level 29. Don't need those just yet. Again, they've got a nice little set of bonuses there for the steel one. And then for the silver one, same set of bonuses. So they're good because they've got like a little bit of critical hit chance. And then some nice balance bonuses, so I'm enjoying using those on this playthrough. Um, I never use any of these swords other than the Ursine ones usually because they have the critical hit damage bonus. Um, the dismember chance isn't that useful, but the critical hit bonus really is. Whereas none of the other swords have as high critical hit bonus as they do. Um, so if you're looking at like the feline swords, they just have higher bleeding chance and add intensity, which is useful. Um, but for this playthrough... I just felt like going with the Wolven Swords for a little bit of a different mix because they give a bit of general sign intensity and the adrenaline gain and the bleeding chance, all of which are useful in this sort of playthrough. So let's just uh, dump as much stuff as we can. We don't really have anything major there, so just that to dump. And we'll just stick with the Wolven Swords for now. Probably end up at about level 30-ish on this playthrough, I would think. Um... I'm just trying to keep it as low as possible at the minute. Right, so we've got talk to Avalar, talk to Jennifer, help Siri. We'll do Siri's bit first. Right, I've got a lot of running about in this bit with Siri, so just to be a bit lazy. Get the werewolf decoction in it. Now, weirdly, that's actually started taking my health, even though the uh, toxicity from the uh, superior tawny is worn off, which is strange. I'll have to uh, meditate and just get rid of that. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Got all the alcohol in the world. So, not a problem. Must have had residual... Um, must have been over... What's the word? What is the word? Have we got the troll decoction yet, actually? Let's have a look. Should have a troll mutagen by now. That was a quite good one, just while you're running around. Werewolf and the troll decoction, if you're ever feeling lazy. What am I missing? I still don't have a troll mutagen, that's interesting. Hmm. Strange. Well, you can get one in Blood and Wine, I know that for a fact anyway, so I'll get those later. How interesting. You can get a troll decoction uh, quite early on if you uh, do the volunteer. But I uh, didn't want to kill him in this playthrough, so. Right. Right, anyway, so we're just going to be running and finding Siri, doing all this stuff. Is it up this way that I go? I think it is. And there she is. <laughs> Looking for something in particular? Um, just when I was so Let me have a look. So we've got people that we've got to help her out with and stuff like that. This is a lot of running and talking and maybe a little bit of fighting. I can't really remember, but yeah. We'll have a look. Let's wait for this to load. Always with the loading screens. Darn it. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, we had missed the last bit of the last episode which was the end of Kaer Morin and I don't have a save to go back to 
to be able to do it, which is a real shame. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a bit unfortunate. Why are you doing this again? Never mind. I want to look him in the eyes. What then? I don't know. Depends what I see. Mm hmm. Come on, Siri, at least run. Ugh. Anyway, what the sandwich fuck is this? Ha! So yeah, I actually uh, left him alive in this playthrough, so you can either kill him earlier or you can leave him alive. And um, yeah, I think Siri decides that he's just uh, just even worse off this way than he is. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so killing him was definitely an option, but... Yeah, fate worse than death. To have all that power and villainy and all that kind of stuff, and then actually to just end up with absolutely nothing. Nice. Right, so she's a waitress at the Golden Sturgeon. Help me contact Dandelion. Got all this stuff. I wish to thank Wonder if I can just run all the way. Can I just run to the Golden Sturgeon myself? I wonder. If she'd been seen with me, she might have been flogged or worked. You're actually running. Oh good, Siri's actually running. Well, that's good because I know where I'm going for the Golden Sturgeon, so I can just go there instead. Alright. So just do these. Like I say, this is a lot of running and talking, these quests, really. Can't remember if you have to fight these guys or if they just go away or whatever, but. Yeah, yeah, get out. Anyway, scare those guys off. Flirt with this bee a little bit. Why not? Garrett got a thing for redheads, maybe? I don't know. Mm. Mm. Alright, so, let's skip through all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, yeah, we skip through all this stuff. Alright, then we've got all this stuff to do. Then we've got... Um, who else have we got to go and visit Siri? I can't remember. What about her? Nothing. Seems nice. Geralt's terrible. What I say. Yeah. <laughs> Top fun. Right, so now we've got one last bit. What have we got? The Candrives and Travelling Circus reports. Oh yeah, I remember these guys. When I came here before, I wanted to contact Trix. Yeah, like a properly pointless horse race and then go and nick some horses and stuff. I don't think, um, let me have a think. I don't think that you have to do the horse race, so I might just skip all that stuff. Right, so we've got to do this bit. Uh, I don't think the choice that you make here really matters. This isn't one of the choices that affects the series ending anyway, so say whatever you want here. Skip through all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so skip through all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Very interesting for the most part, but yeah. All right, so we can skip through all that. All right, so I'm just going to skip through this. Like I say, I don't think there's there's no reason to do the horse race or anything like that. So I'm just going to save some time, skip through it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so skip through all this stuff. Hmm. 
All right, so we're going to go through all this stuff. Right, so we're just going to go that. No, no, no. Okay, so we'll go through all that stuff. Skip through, blah, blah, blah. Right, so we skip through this stuff. Anyway. So yeah, we gotta go and steal these things. There is a way to do this without killing the guard, because like, you know, the guard at the stable is pretty innocent to be honest. Or do you have to fist fight him? I can't remember. If you have to fist fight him, it's alright. But you don't want to kill him. Just like if you can help it. Hmm. Anyway, so we've got to find this guy. Worst guards ever. Guy just jumps up into it. I mean, there's obviously something going on there and they're just like oblivious, but yeah, whatever. Right, so. Come this way from the worst guards ever. And then I think you have to axe the horses. I can never remember how you actually get away with doing this, so. See if I can remember. I doubt I can. I can never get this sorted. I just forget how you do it every time. Which is weird because I remember everything important about the game, but little things like this, I can never remember. Yeah, so he wakes up. Oh, it's alright. It's only fist fighting him. So I think if you run, they just wake up already, but I always end up doing that anyway. So. Uh, but you can use the signs anyway, so it's particularly easy. Because you can stun him, get a few hits in. That's easy enough. Okay, well, as long as you're not killing him and only knocking him out, that's okay. Calm down, honestly. Yeah, I think it might be that if you run, it spooks the horses. I can't remember. But anyway, that's that sorted. Shut up, honestly. Anyway, that's all that done. Key that. Okay. So yeah, again, dumbest guards ever, but yeah. What? Okay. Okay, so that's all sorted. Yeah, there is a much cleaner way of doing that, but I think you have to <clears throat> walk first, maybe get the key, then calm the horses. I can't remember. But anyway, you can do it, but it doesn't really matter. Doing it that way gets the same result. I think that's all the Siri bits done. And then we'll have to go and do Triss and Jens. Now, which bit is Triss's? Trying to remember which bit Triss's is. One of them you have to go to the fortress. And you have to fight a bunch of guards and rescue Sil and one of the others if you chose to have Sil alive in the playthrough. That's with Yen. And then Triss, you go to the um the big whorehouse where you have the uh, Gwent tournament. And then, what do you do with Triss? Honestly, I can't remember. I might do Twisters first because it's going to bug me. Alright, let's go and find Triss anyway. Could do a bunch of stuff with them really. I think I'll probably respec later when I'm starting New Game Plus and stuff like that. But these are pretty much all the skills I really want at the moment or need. Um, could get a few more points in precise blows, I suppose. 
I mean, I'll respec later, so... Just to uh, save on convenience, I might as well have acquired tolerance. Need 12 points to get down to fast metabolism, which I could do now. Um, fast, metabolism, fast metabolism is super useful, so that's a possibility. But again, it just makes everything too easy if you do it that way, really. Uh, we'll see. We'll go with that for now. Use a few of those points. Just for the convenience of height and tolerance, so I can use potions on top of the decoctions if ever need. But yeah, fast metabolism is a superbly powerful skill. I love that one. Very, very good. Obviously, I could just get synergy as well if I wanted synergy. How many uh, toxicity points do I have, like, spare at the minute then? See, I've got enough to use pretty much any potion apart from Superior White Rafford on top of the decoctions. If I'm, so I can have three decoctions, then potions on top, which is useful. So, we'll see. I could use those later. Anyway, let's speak to Triss first. Do her quests, then go from there. Whoops. Could have done with a troll mutagen for the uh, upcoming quest with Avalak, really. That's a bit of a shame. Surprised I don't have one already, really. Right, so. Go through all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won. Don't worry about it. Anyway, let's go. What do we have to do again? Um... Might be Philippa. Is it Philippa we have to go? Good. I'm glad I got that. Uh, anyway, so so we've got Phil and Margarita, blah, blah, blah. Let's have a look. Right, okay, so what do we have to do? Yeah. So yeah, Zoltan lost her and we've got to do all that stuff. Okay, so we've got to go and find Philippa. Right, so that was that. I couldn't remember what you do, so yeah, you have to find Phil with Triss, that's cool. Go and do that now. Yeah, so... Finding the sorceresses at the prison or the fortress or whatever it is, that's with Yen. That does make s I do remember that bit, because Yen teleports them out afterwards. And then Avalak is through time and space, which is a really cool quest. Really cool quest. So, got all that. Tempted to do through time and space first, actually, but we'll see. Oh, look. Beautiful scenery again. What a superb game. Love this game. Anyway, right, so we're just going to go on with that. I've got all that stuff. Dijkstra. Then we've got to go and, yeah, go to Dijkstra's bathhouse. Stop punching Trist. Didn't really mean to do that. Although a lot of people, you know, maybe would do. Where's Dijkstra's bathhouse? Closest way to it, I think, is this way. Uh, we're just going to do that. Right, so here we've got to go and speak to Dijkstra, then do the Philippa things. And here is where you have to make a really important choice about whether you start Reason of State, depending on how you uh, speak to Dijkstra at the end of this. So if you uh, push Dijkstra aside forcefully, then you don't get access to Reason of State, you're not involved in that plot, and Radovid survives, and, Ruden and uh, Radovid's realms will win the Northern War. 
So you have to be very careful with that. Right, right, so go has to take on this himself. It's quite irritating, but never mind. Her man's venom on there. Get coin up before we start. Check these guys out. Doing a good chunk of damage there. A little bit more because we now uh, put precise blows in the slot as well. And then we've got the poisoning from the Greater Marana Runestone too. Uh, can we grab anything useful off these guys or not really? If it's just ashes then I'm not even going to bother looting the rest of them. Anyway. Where are these other enemies then? Oh, they must be below. Now if I was feeling particularly monstrous, I could try and kill Bart for the troll mutagen. But I mean, let's be honest, can't kill Bart. Kill these guys first. See, this is why, even though it's no armor playthrough, it does become quite manageable as you get along. Because... Ow, why am I not facing that guy? Um, ugh, irritating. You do a lot more damage if you get, you know, the red skills and everything else, so... Hey, Bart. So yeah, you could attack Bart, and then I would probably get the Troll Mutagen, but like, not about that life. Mm-hmm. Like I say, not about that life, are we? Let's be honest. The Drowner's down here. Oh, we you stop being so dramatic, Phil? Anyway. Have I actually not looted that case? I don't think so. Does that weird thing sometimes where it shows stuff up as yellow, even though you've looted them already? Because obviously I looted these the first time through. Ashes, pointless. No good. Now if I remember, and I think I do, we do have to, um... Uh, we do have to fight a elemental here. I'll do that first. It's a fire elemental, so we'll be making good use of art against this. Because it'll put out the flames, which is helpful. And every time we use art sweep, same as always, it uh, lets us get a couple of hits in and put out the flames on the fire elemental as well. So get a couple of hits in, art sweep. And it's an extremely useful tactic against elementals as well, as you can see. So again, do love the ancient lesson decoction there. Can we uh, loot this? I want to loot that thing. Oh well, never mind. Now you're supposed to walk here so that Phil doesn't know where you are, but... You can run for most of it. Get closer to her and deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop being so dramatic, Phil. Anyway, so that's how you do that. Again, Ard is very useful versus the fire elementals because it puts out the flames. So it stops you getting burnt when you hit them and it stops them using their fire attacks temporarily. So Makes them a lot more manageable, especially if you have Ancient Lesson Sweep. Combination. So we've got Phil, blah, 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 blah. Deepstra hates Phil, blah blah blah. Okay. Right, now this, this will cause you to break Deepstra's leg and stop um, you from being able to kill Radovid. So if you want to do Reason of State, then, yeah, there you go. Okay. That's all that bit sorted. We could go down to the sewer and try and get the uh, 
whatever the golem dropped if you needed a golem heart or any, the elemental dropped if you needed a golem heart or anything like that. But not particularly bothered about this at this point. <clears throat> I've done reason to state there just to give me the option of which uh, ending I get, but I probably will just ignore it and just actually have that as a failed quest to be perfectly honest. Um, but we'll see. Need to do through time and space and all this stuff. Right, so now I've got to run back and the last two people to speak to are uh, Avalach and Yennefer. Now, I'm level 27, so I doubt that I'd get a full level from doing through time and space. But you never know. So I'll do through time and space first. And the reason I'm thinking that is because if I get to level 29 before Yennefer's, then I can upgrade my swords before I do Yennefer's quest where we've got like quite a few uh, enemies to fight. Whereas there's not really that many enemies to fight that I remember in through time and space. So do this bit first. Like I say, I could have done with having a troll decoction because I usually use that, but we'll just have to make do with the others instead. Alright, so we've got to do this. Do all the bits in uh, with Gales and all that. And get him to betray... What's his name? Um, what's the word? What's the word? Oh yeah, get him to betray uh, Eridan. That's it. So that little cutscene that I just skipped was uh, Gales' um, previous uh, king being killed, poisoned by... Have a lack, so. Alright, so we've got to go and do this stuff. Uh, which means doing through time and space. Alright, so we've got to do that. Go to the house where the uh, Godling Sarah was previously living really early on in the game. With the Oneromancer. If you remember that. Can't remember her name. But yeah. Anyway, we've got to do this, go through the part at the bottom, the portal at the bottom of the house, and then do the through time and space quest. Now, it is easier if you have the troll decoction, because the bits with the poison gases and the bits outside, you can just heal up using the troll decoction, because it's all out of battles. But, because I haven't had a troll mutagen yet, it's not really an option. So, I could go and try and find a troll in Skellige, or somewhere like that. But not really necessary. I'll make do without it. Right, so there's the portal, which they've weirdly missed in their own house. But yeah, just going to skip through this and do the through time and space quest, so... I hate portals. Now, I can't actually remember which of the... If you can actually meditate and get your potions back. Because really I could have done maybe without the werewolf decoction. And just had the echidna one instead. So I'll try and do that now if possible. And then that'll, that'll leave me plenty to be able to use superior swallow and the white rapid if needed. This bit's all pretty cool. Uh, I'll leave the decoctions for now. Welcome to the Dido-wet desert. There's somewhere in our This bit's so cool. Such canyons in your world. Come, we must no. What is this place? A very old world, thoroughly raped and destroyed. Any Incredible seeing this. Absolutely brilliant. So maybe we can't meditate at all, which is a slight problem. We'll have a see in a minute. But anyway, the main thing is that we get our insectoid oil. We'll have a few insectoids to deal with. 
gets on end without water. Before we go through this portal. Oh, and large sand crabs beneath the surface. We must be careful they don't sense us. And before, were there any people or elves? Do you believe human beings hmm. have a monopoly on destroying worlds? So what did live here? Sentient monsters of some sort? Look at hmm. Remind you of anything? Hmm. Look a bit like the bed of a giant river. Or the bottom yep. of the sea. Think there were water creatures this game's so cool. No creature. Is there any water? Weird. But there are many different worlds and even more forms of life. Many of them intelligent, much more so in fact than you humans. Mm. As it turns out, not even that could stop them from exhausting all the resources of their world. To the last drop. Wrecked. Looks more like a ruin. Appearances can be deceiving. So what are we waiting for? For it to open. Take Duh. Yeah, but unfortunately, those sand crabby things are going to turn up, which is tons of fun. Look at that scenery. Amazing. Anyway. What's going on? The sand crabs. Rep roll. Wonderful. Yeah, they have. Right, let's take these things out first. Alright, because I had the ancient lesson decoction, so I can uh, get a bit of a uh, stamina regeneration, a couple of uses of Axie first, and then we'll start with Ard Sweep. Tried to burn them there, but didn't get it. They don't do very much damage, mercifully, so I didn't realise it was as weak as that, their damage, but you know, never mind. Be able to get that back with a couple of uses of the Echidna decoction, which also doubles up with the ancient lesson decoction as I keep going on about. And making a big difference there, so that's fine. And then I'll be able to use a bit of Axie. Now my stamina regeneration is much higher. Just keep compounding the effect, which is really useful. And then take these things out. Now, if you're on a new game plus, this is actually a, an excellent place to uh, get the... Um, what's it called? Uh, Arendite Sword leveled up. Um... Because you can level up very quickly at the Cairn Morin sections, and that can mean that you sort of get behind on uh, leveling up Arendite. So this is an excellent place to catch up, because these things just keep uh, respawning. So you can just kill them here until the portion uh, portal opens. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to, you can just keep killing these things, and um, you know, charge up Arendite by avoiding taking hits, which is very useful. So, something to remember for your new game plus playthrough. Alright, so whilst these are all like that, I'll just uh, jump through. Because there's no point in me killing the... You don't get, like, any fantastic materials from them or anything. And here we get separated from Avalark. So, can we actually meditate? No, we can't. So, it's a good job I've got the Echidna Decoction active already, because I will need that. To make sure that you get um, ancient lesson decoction as well. <coughs> have to be careful with that because if we uh, lose health, we'll have to get it back by using signs instead of jumping because I do have the werewolf decoction still active. But at least having that werewolf decoction also means that. Um, I won't run out of stamina whilst I'm actually running, so I can uh, make it to the next <clears throat> fresh air areas a little bit easier. Now, where is the place of power? It's over there. I need to make sure I get that first. I don't want to miss that. And make sure that you are paying attention for where you're going and get that place of power before you do anything else because that is missable. Because you never get to come back here afterwards, so you do have to be very careful. So now that we've got that, I just need to make my way down and uh, go this way afterwards. <coughs> Alright, now which way is going to be the best to go? Get my breath back there. 
And we are trying to make it over that place. So, let's see if I can make it this way. There is a much safer way to go, but uh, obviously I've not done it this time. Which way is it that you can actually go? Uh, I might have come the wrong way here. This is a problem. There's like a much safer way to go and you just like run around the other way, but I forget which way it is, so. Okay, so. I think that'll be alright. Couple of uses of signs with the echidna decoction. Like I say, if you have the troll decoction, you can just stand there and just heal back your health outside of battle really quickly. It's not good for in battle, but it is very good outside of battle, so. You know, that'll uh, suffice here, no problem. But for this bit, not really necessary. Now, because I can't meditate, I can't rid of, get rid of the decoctions, but I do have heightened tolerance, so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll be able to use the killer whale potion and not have it take uh, not take damage. And so before you go into this part of the portal, uh, you want to actually do that. So before you go in, get your breath back up to full. And uh, the next bit takes you underwater. So if you can, try and remember to use the killer whale before you go in. So it'll already be active. That gives you plenty of time to loot all the stuff in here if you want to. Which I will be doing here. So there's Killer Whale, already active. Because if you activate Killer Whale once you're already underwater, then it doesn't have any effect. So you want to, like I say, make sure it's active first. Get a few useful things there, like Meteorite or Crystallized Essence. Which you can use in crafting or you can sell if you need be. And then I think this takes you to the last part, which is the ice world. And this is where it's extremely useful to have the... Um, it's where it's really useful to have the um, other decoction, if you can. The troll decoction, because it, it offsets this... Offsets this, because Quen will break like that, so... Just got to make sure that you... Um, Keep your health up. And if you've got either the echidna decoction or the troll decoction, it's a lot easier. So here I'm just using the echidna decoction. And because I've got the werewolf decoction active as well, I can run as far as I want, but I don't lose stamina when I'm jumping, so I can't just jump to get my health back with the echidna decoction like I would normally. Uh, so I'll just have to make sure that I uh, use signs instead. So use the stamina from my signs. Oh, what? Well, that sucked. Famous falling damage. Wasn't able to hit B to roll there, which is how I've avoided it for, you know, the rest of the playthrough, but whatever. How irritating. <laughs> right, just going to have a look at that. Wait for the loading times. Very irritating considering, you know, I didn't actually do anything wrong there, but that's happened to pretty much every Witcher on the path in Witcher 3 at some point. Right, so let's try that again. I wonder if there's a more direct way somewhere. Okay, so let's try that. Go down this way. There are a couple of different ways to go about this. There's nothing particularly great to grab. I mean, going the other way, I had a couple of, you know, lesser rune stones and stuff like that, but nothing amazing. So it's not really necessary to uh, grab everything along the way. You know, just a little bit of uh, alchemy and stuff like that. So, let's go this way. Run down this way again. Eventually, I think you do meet some Hounds of the Wild Hunt. And I've got the Insectoid Oil on 
uh, currently, so let's get through all these. It is irritating how it sort of changes the uh, order of your stuff because meditate doesn't come up as the default one, so yeah. But very minor ir irritation. Yeah, Hounds of the Wild Hunt. Anyway, so we'll kill these things easy enough. When I upgrade my swords, I'll have to remember to um, get a greater rune stones added into them as well. I can't remember why, but I don't have those. I will have covered that in an earlier episode of the playthrough. Ah, oh, so annoying. Oh, it's because it skips out your map as well, that's why. So at the minute, I've got poison and stun on both of them. So I'll add something else. I can't remember what I was going to say. Maybe an extra 5% bleeding rune. That would be quite useful. Gonna make a run for it and go this way. At least with the werewolf decoction, I never have to stop running, which is quite useful. And when I need a little more extra health, I can just very quickly use the uh, um, hard sweep, build that little bit of health back up. Then the next time I get in uh, shade uh, cover, rather, I can just do that again. And then go on from there. Now there's normally a couple of the hounds to fight around here. I'm just going to make a break for the door. Don't really need to take those on. Get my health back up. And then we can go and see Avalak, wait for this portal, and then see Gales. And that's the rest of the quest done. So you can do it through time and space pretty quickly if you know what you're doing with it and stuff. So just going to have to do that stuff. Got some really interesting uh, vocabulary um, options there as well, if you need to. So I'm not going to hit level 29 before that quest of Yen, so it doesn't really matter. I'm trying to keep my level actually as low as possible at the minute. Because I want to have a save for doing New Game Plus with Nard Sweet build, which would be kind of cool. A piercing cold build, rather. When you can actually make good use of it. Be pretty cool. I'm glad to know you appreciate it. Just realised I really should have added the extra points in there. No reason not to. Uh, so what else did I have? Yeah, so I did say I'm probably going to get fast metabolism at some point. Might need some extra. Um, might need some extra. Vitality for the fight against Caranthia, so I may end up using these as well. Just to uh, have a bit of synergy, I'll put those on. Really don't need the Vitality, I should really put a Greater Red Mutagen, but again, I don't want to be doing tons more damage. So I might as well just put the Vitality one on there. That does actually remind me though, there is a weird thing with the um, Vitality there, so that's 450. And uh, I think it's with Synergy, it doesn't work properly. So there I've got 5750 Vitality at the bottom. So it is adding the correct amount. But if you have the Synergy skill, which is supposed to boost the effect of the Greater Mutagens, it doesn't add the Vitality on properly, which is very odd. But, yeah. Never mind. Alright, so we've got all this stuff. Uh, right, okay, so go through all this stuff. So I'll skip through all this stuff, show him who killed. Um, I don't know why you can suddenly go back directly, but I mean, I suppose it doesn't make a lot of sense to have to have just repeat the whole mission again for no reason, no apparent reason. So we'll go along with it. Why not? Hmm. do do Right, so got to wait for another loading screen. Finish this off. We do indeed show that Eridin killed the last king, and then Gael signs decides that he will trap the Nagelfair 
in Skellige, which is what allows us to do the last quest and actually defeat Karanthi and Eridin. Karanthi is actually a much harder fight than Eridin, I think. I'm not sure about it with no armor, but normally Karanthi is a much, much more difficult fight. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, again, it's the hard sweep and getting your stamina regeneration up at the start of the Karanthi fight is going to be a big, big help. So we'll have to try and do that. Just waiting for this to load. But it's taking a long time. Why is this taking forever to load? All it's going to do is load this cutscene and I'm going to skip it anyway. So apologies for those of you watching this back. But hopefully we'll get this sorted and then we might be able to just squeeze in Yen's part of the quest as well before the end of the episode. All right, so we'll get through all this. Let's have a look. Recognize the guy who does the voice of Gales, but I don't remember exactly what from. I'm sure I do. Oh, it sounds very similar to a few other people's voices, if that's the case. Skip through that, prove the prove the truth to him. Then we go out there. Sorted. So I get a ton of points there. Damn, I knew you got a bunch more points. I thought it'd probably take me to level 29, but I'm just shy. Is there anything else that I really need to do? Not really. I'll just update them after I've done Yen's quest. So I just need to go and find Yennefer now. And I believe she's waiting at the brothel, if I remember correctly. So we'll go and do that, and then we will definitely have enough um, to be able to upgrade our swords. And decide what rune I put in them. I might put a 5% bleeding rune in them, because bleeding is such a powerful thing. So they'd have a bit of poisoning chance, a bit of bleeding chance, and... Uh, uh, well, a bit of poisoning chance, a bit of stun chance, and then a higher... Um, chance of bleeding. Oh, where's Yen? She's sat over here. What's up, Yen? Right, so we're just going to skip through this stuff. Right, so we skip through all this stuff. Uh, right, so we're going to skip through all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Right, so we're doing all this. We've got to go and catch this guy. It's kind of annoying um, trying to catch this dude, but like... If you race after him here, I mean, I've got the werewolf decoction active already, which is useful. So I've got to chase after him and which way he's gone. And uh, the easiest way is to just uh, run after him. Now, again, I've got the werewolf decoction, so just for convenience. And what he does is he tries to um, climb up a ladder. And if you can get him with Ard while he climbs up a ladder, then you can stop him with that, which is cool. So as he climbs up here, stop it. Saves you having to chase him about. So if you can remember to use the werewolf decoction beforehand, then you can chase after him without losing your stamina. And then you can just use Ard on him like that, which is kind of fun. So we go that, and then we go through that stuff. Skip through, blah, blah, blah. Speak to him, find out how he gets up, uh, gets there. And then we have to go to Oxenfurt and do that. I think it's Oxenfurt we have to go to. 
Oh, loading screens. Oh my days. I feel like I've seen a lot of those this episode. Anyway. Just going to skip through all this stuff. Uh, find out how he got past the guards and all that kind of stuff. Now go through that. Right, so we're going that way. Right, let's have a look. Now I've never actually had Zoltan help me on this bit. Ah, there you go. That's brilliant. Perfect timing. So get a bit of... Um, got a little bit of experience there and that'll let me upgrade my swords. So where am I now in relation to here? So I just want to go left. Just go and get my swords upgraded first. And then I can carry on. And the blacksmith's there as well, that's fortunate. So level 29 for the superior woven and feline swords. The griffin ones you actually get a lot lower, so they get superior version at level 26. So they lower damage, but you can get the superior version earlier. And the ursine is one level higher, so that's level 30. What do you have on offer? He says, right, nothing major there. Got the woven silver there. And then just get the woven superior. Yeah. Don't even need anything particularly impressive for those. Already had all of the ingredients. Uh, just repair all my stuff. Didn't cost me very much. And now the only thing we've really got to look at is uh, what I'm going to put in these swords. So let's put an extra rune in there. Now freeze is pretty good. Uh, it could have a bit of extra sign intensity with the Vela's ones. Stagger isn't bad either. And burning is also useful. So I could put burning in so that they have a chance to burn or stun or poison or bleed. All of which is pretty useful. Um, which I kind of like the idea of, or I could have a higher chance of bleeding by putting a uh, Divana runestone in. Um, <clears throat> I do have two greater Divanas that I'd made already. I'm just going to go with those, because bleeding is such a very powerful technique. And if we really need, we can burn stuff with Igni a lot of the time. Um, so <clears throat> I'll just go with the Divana ones. But Dazbog would have been a fine choice as well, so uh, I could have gone Ozoria, any of those. So... A lot of the 5% chances are pretty powerful. The only ones I'd seriously recommend staying away from are the armor-piercing ones because you can just use heavy attacks against anything that has armor and um, ignore the armor anyway. So those are mainly enemies like Arrakase and things like that. So we'll just ask Zoltan what's up first. But if you help the witches escape, um, which I always do, I always tend to do Triss's quests even if I'm not like romancing her, then <clears throat> Zoltan won't be able to help because the guards will have returned their attentions to the other people's like dwarves, halflings and elves. So, Which is what he's telling us just now, so um, can't do that. Okay. Sorted. Well, at least you've tried that. I don't think you get any extra experience for that, but I just wanted to sort of double check anyway. And now we've got to fast travel to Oxenfurt. So we'll have another loading screen. How fun. Never mind. Where are we going? We'll just go through this. Hmm. Right, just got to wait for this and then go on. I'm very glad I used that werewolf decoction to be honest because you need to be running a lot more than anything else in these quests, so. Where's Yen? Where you at Yen? Oh there she is. Did 
do a well, shall we let's do Where are we going, Yen? Oh, she never runs. Just jogging. They haven't. How can you be sure? Novograd's hierarchs have taken great. Which way are we going? I think it's this way. All memories of the city's elven roots. Even if anyone remembers the ruins are there, they have no recollection of how far and where they extend. And I'm absolutely certain no one's thought to place sentries there. Hope you're right. Cool. Come on, Yen. I get my hair cut while I'm here. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Right, no point dwelling on why she's not coming with me. Sploosh. That reminds me, actually, I picked up the uh, superior cat potion at some point. What am I missing for it? An ether. I did buy a load of extra white gold, so I might as well line that. I used my last ergo seed for that as well. Might as well make that. Can use that here. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, I've just made it. A few things to pick up there as well. I think there are a couple of other chests down here, but I don't remember seeing them. Ah, it's just that relic sword. I wonder if that's any good. It won't be better than the woven swords, obviously, but interesting to see what they have nonetheless. Coin intensity, actually critical hit, 10% chance of bleeding. That's actually a really good sword, but as you can see, the damage is quite a lot lower than the um, Witcher swords. I put Necrophage Oil and Superior Hangman's Venom on. Little Tomb Raider nod here. Ha, ah, fun. Um, but yeah, I've put those on because you have to fight some necrophages around here. And take these on. Nice little 5% stun chance there. Take those out nice and easy. As you can see there, I've got a lesser red mutagen, so you can, from these higher level drowners, get those sometimes. Which can be useful, but obviously I've already well stocked up on those greater ones, because I've already been to Tucson. And uh, used the Deadly Precision. Uh, I did a separate little video about that, about, uh, you know, how I used Deadly Precision. Because um, it's extremely useful. There, so that's the water where I've just come from, don't need to be going there. Uh, yeah, so I used Deadly Precision to be able to take out the giant centipedes, even though it was a much, much, much lower level. So that was quite interesting. Where do I need to go? Can't even remember. Not that way. Let's find out where we're going. There's a lever somewhere that you have to find and use. And a water hag to fight as well. Yep, there's the water hag. I'll just. Try and take her out. See, so actually doing like pretty good damage now. Um, with that. So we can deal with that quite easily. I haven't even actually checked if I've got the Grave Hag mutagen yet. Because I haven't been using the Grave Hag decoction, uh, Water Hag decoction. Because normally that's a really powerful one to use. And if you're using a build 
I would be either using, normally I would use either a medium um, build with Griffin School techniques or a Ursine build that stops you from taking a ton of damage. Um, so it can be quite useful like that. And if that was the case, then I would be at full health a lot more often than I am on this playthrough. Um, which is more of a glass cannon style that I've been playing here, obviously. So, the Warthog decoction it, for that 50% damage increase is really good, usually, if it's a build where you can either keep Quen up or avoid taking damage because of your armor and resistances. Um, but a lot less useful in this build because if I want to stay at full health all the time, uh, then I would just be having to dodge a lot more and the combat would be a little more boring. So, I've been uh, staying away from that, not really necessary in this playthrough. I can go in that way. Anything interesting up that way? No. Got some ghouls and stuff like that. And I believe that's a devourer or a ravager or something like that. So just get some burning on these things. This would be a good idea to use a superior devil's puffball. And uh, this is a neat little trick that you can do if you have the superior golden oriole potion. Uh, you can throw a devil's puffball and then stand in the poison cloud yourself. And whilst poisoned, that will act actually act as extra healing for you. So that, that can be pretty useful. So the poisoning will heal your, uh, hurt your enemies and will also uh, heal yourself, which is cool. Oof, almost died there. And then that thing's going to explode. And then the ghoul is getting poison there as well. Get a bit of bleeding on it that way. I'll just keep a, keep a bit of Axie up there. Golden Oreo's still active, so again I can just throw a puffball and then jump into that cloud and get a bit of extra healing. Whilst they are taking the damage as well. Some more fire damage. And the poison in there. Damage over time is really good if you are not playing as damaging a build on Deathmatch. Uh, like, for the most part, I don't use poison blades or have too much use for poisoning because I'll be playing a, a very powerful build and I'll be playing something like... Um, if things are properly optimized and you're trying to make the game as manageable as possible instead of deliberately making it a challenge, then you'd uh, likely be using stuff like... <coughs> Um, Euphoria or Piercing Cold. But if you want a different kind of build, then you can use some of the damage over time effects. If you're not dealing as much direct damage, they can be very useful. Interesting to play with a little bit of extra tactics sometimes, if that's the way you feel like going. So that's locked. That's going up a different way. I'm pretty sure it's the other way we have to go, but we'll see. Can't remember what's down there, so I'm not particularly bothered about it. I just like killing monsters. Which way did I go? This way. This is the way we needed to go. There's a ladder somewhere, I remember that much. You have to climb the ladder. Maybe it is the, up the other way, actually, but we'll find out. Uh, it must be this way then. Did I miss the ladder? Yeah, I did. Uh, not a ladder, just a gap there then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see these guys go down extremely quickly now. They're just doing a really high damage, so... Got the sewer key. If I remember correctly, that Thyssen armor is a medium armor, but it has really good resistances. That's quite an interesting one if you want to use a non-Witcher type of armor. So, hit these guys. Easy kills here. Careful with the dudes with the mace again. Got him with a instant kill though. Just finish that guy off with Axie. You can see that the actual direct damage from uh, Igni is really low. 
Um, like the actual, it didn't inflict burning there, and uh, he was almost dead, but the damage didn't finish him off anyway. So it is like you know really uh, low damage like that. Anyway, here's Margarita, so be able to get her out. But when the actual fire damage hits them, you can see that there's just natural ton of stuff damage there as well. So. I sometimes wonder if they did what they did with the Ancient Lesson decoction deliberately, like if it only works with certain signs on purpose, because if it worked with regular Quen or reg regular Igni, it would be absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's very strong anyway, but it'd be absolutely ludicrous if it worked with, you know, some of the regular signs. It'd be very useful with Erden, like, I don't know why it doesn't work with uh, Erden Magic Trap, so it's a bit strange, but... Right, so here we've got to fight a bunch of enemies. And the best way to try and uh, do this bit for me is to try and get everybody all together. Um, just be making sure that you're dodging and all this stuff. Uh, just guarding so that the... Uh, right, and then when, when you've got them all together, try and get them all together, including this shield guy. Draw everybody in. Come on, come on, come on. And then Northern Wind Bomb. Oh, that was moon dust. Damn, I thought that was northern wind. Anyway, and then northern wind. Where are we at? This is what we actually meant to do. So, dancing star first. Get a bunch of damage on them. Very useful. And then after they've been burning for a little while, get the uh, northern wind in there. And that is extremely useful because it lets you get a bunch of hits in. Ow, ow, whoa, that hurt. Damn, that hurt. Now, we've fortunately got a ton of poison in there because our swords have very good chances to do uh, poisoning too. And uh, one of the archers just hit themselves, which is quite funny. So, instant kill on him. Just got that off in time. Get another dancing star in there. I'll get my own health back up. Deflect another arrow there. And while they're all backing off and I'm still in combat, I can uh, use the uh, hard sweep again just to get my uh, health higher. Oof, I was going to deflect that, but I missed it, which is a shame. Ow. So, yeah, just got to be a little bit careful there. But uh, I'll be able to finish these guys off. Keep getting hit by that archer. I keep meaning to deflect his arrows and then missing it, so... Uh, let me just keep getting my stamina regeneration up. Get Quinn, as I'm a little bit close to death there. And, uh, yeah, I missed it again, so I think I'm just going to kill this guy, because I keep meaning to deflect his arrows, and he keeps shooting at an opportune moment, so I'll take him out like that. Now, we've got a very high uh, stamina regeneration right now because of the uses of uh, Ancient Lesion Decoction. So that'll let me get in a good few hits here with these guys. And uh, that'll let me finish them off, so... Two for one. And then the Warden has uh, more health than the others, but... As always, we managed to uh, get them with Axie, which is extremely useful for, like, a single person. And that all worked out pretty well. So yeah, again, I love using those sort of tactics like that, and that's why this playthrough is kind of fun, especially with the enemy upscaling on. So they were doing like a fair amount of damage there. Um, still less than I would expect, for it, considering it's no armor. You know, I would really sort of think they would kill you in one hit, but I don't know. I guess that might be considered a bit too difficult. I don't know. There's a bunch of other stuff you can pick up in here as well. Um... But not really necessary. You get a ton of useful stuff like tracking bolts, which are even better than the um, broadhead bolts. So they are worth getting. Worth killing these guys for. I think there's two more guys in here that you have to fight, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Thought they were, but I guess not. Okay, so everything there, 
Unfortunately, I uh, killed all those guys just before my uh, decoctions all ran out. Ran out. There's a couple of things you can get up here, but nothing really amazing from what I remember. But for the sake of being completionist, we'll grab them anyway. This is where we'll be coming back to escape anyway a little bit later. A recipe for the older folk boots, those are pretty good. Although, to be perfectly honest, I would never craft the older folk boots because even though they have very good resistances, um, the relic version is better. And the reason the relic version is better is because it has Igni sign intensity as well. Quite a lot. It'll add like, you know, depending on the set of boots you get, it can be up to about 15 or 16% Igni sign intensity as a bonus, uh, which is really good. So we need to be going back down now. If you want to free the other prisoners in this bit, uh, you've got the keys now, so you have to make sure that you uh, open all the other cells before you open uh, Marguerite's, because the key will disappear after you open Marguerite's cell. I don't think there's anything particularly brilliant in there, but, you know, I'll just go with the fact that the witch hunters are kind of gimps, and so I don't like them, and we should probably release all the people that they've got. Or maybe I'm just releasing a load of, uh, you know, murderers or anything else onto the streets, but, you know. Who knows? Anyway, so I can open all these. That's Margaritas. Open all the other cells first. Now, depending on what you chose when you spoke to Mohan uh, in Vizima, right at the start of the game, where you make the Witcher 2 choices and stuff, uh, depends on if Seal is there as well. And uh, you have to make the decision whether to kill Seal or to leave her to die. So I always just choose that she's dead from Witcher 2 because that avoids that little thing there. She's going to be dead anyway, so, you know. Sorry, Seal. Tough times. Anyway. So that's the great escape done. Another quest sorted. Obviously, these guys are all already dead. We just have to get out of the prison and that's that. So, that is going to be final preparations all done. And we are level 29, which is, you know, pretty fair. We'll end up about level 30, which is pretty good because I wanted to leave it as low as possible if I could. And I managed to do that. So, yeah, I think I'll probably end up about level 30 at the end of this playthrough, which will let me make a save game to be able to... Um, nope, this is Hearts of Stone bit. Uh, be able to make me... Let me have a save game where I'll be able to start the um, playthrough on New Game Plus at the lowest level as possible when Piercing Cold is hopefully still very effective. So we'll have a look at that. Now one thing I would want to do there if at all possible would be to do the very first bits of Hearts of Stone just up until I can get the um, Viper Armour. And I can switch to that in New Game Plus with that same thing, but I'm not sure. We'll have to, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let me have a look. Okay, so this is where I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to fast travel back uh, to be able to meet Jennifer and the lodge and do all that. Uh, let me see. Have I got time to do that now? I might have time to do that now. No, I think we're going to have to leave it there, so we'll start off picking up with final preparations and uh, hopefully be able to put all that into one episode to finish off the playthrough. But if not, then obviously it will stretch to two. So thank you very much for watching. If you've watched the whole thing on YouTube, I really do appreciate it. Please like, comment and subscribe. Uh, helps me out, and especially if you're enjoying the content. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think of how things are going. Thank you very much for watching all, and have a good day on the path.